This is what is new today, my solution to protecting the DC to DC SSR from unintentional overcurrent spikes that I cause when sticking too much work into the work coil, usually ferrous metal of some sort. It's basically an Arduino Uno that reads the voltage drop across the existing 75 millivolt shunt that also connects to the analog ammeter that is my major load indicator. The actual shunt voltage is amplified about 50 times by one leg of an LM324 op amp. A digital output of the Arduino is normally high at about 5 volts to turn the SCR on. Right now the software is set to drop that input to zero if it sees a current of 48 amperes or more. It stays low until the operator removes the cause of the overcurrent and pushes the reset button on the face of the SSR protection box. For some reason, there's a nonlinearity between the analog meter and my Arduino implementation at the low end, but I have adjusted the UNO software to match the meter at the high end of the scale, so I accomplish exactly what I need to do. Okay, everything's on. We're going to check to see if the DC the DC SSR protection circuit works. Remember the DC SSR is behind the panel here. So I'm first going to turn the current on with the breaker here and we see we have six amps on the meter on the analog meter only two amps here there's a nonlinearity uh, between the two at the low end of the scale. I don't really care about that, not too sure why it is, but it's, it works fine in the software up where we need it to. So the first thing I'm going to do is to put this old uh, graphite, old worn graphite crucible in the, uh, the stock uh, two and five eighths inch diameter work coil that comes with the machine and see what happens. We have an SSR temperature of 80 degrees right now on the heat sink. So I'm putting it in there and we got 10, 20, 30, 37, 38, 39 amperes. And that's just to show that the system works normally as it should. And the uh, box of the SSR protection device is reading 38, 39 and the analog amp meter is reading 3839 so we're right in there better get that out of there before it gets too hot to handle then to test the tripping mechanism I'm going to put this piece of steel pipe in there and uh, if I just drop this in the whole coil I'm sure the current would go up to 60 to 70 amps but we're just going to go up high enough to trip. And so here we go. I'm going to put it in a little bit slowly. 30, uh, 30 40, 48. And the current on the analog amp meter went to zero. And hopefully you can see that the little LED came on here. And that says that, hey, I've tripped things off. You won't get any current flow until you push the reset button. I push the reset button and indeed we're back to six amps. Again, if I put the piece of steel in there again, things behave normally, 30 amps, things behave normally, 40 amps, things behave normally, 46, getting hot, trip. And that's what's supposed to happen. So that's really the guts of this test. And again, do we reset? Yes, we do. And things are back to normal. I know this was just a short test drawing current. The solid state relay only got up to 88.5 degrees, water 28.5, barely any change. Of course, we were only drawing current for a very short period of time. One other comment that I'd like to make is that I have added, I don't know if you can see it back here, I've added a, uh, a 30 amp blade fuse in series with the main uh, power breaker and stuff and that's the kind you would get at the automobile store called a blade fuse and I can feel that that got warm to the touch but it didn't blow 
I have yet to actually test that to see if it would last a long time if I was going to heat something for 40 minutes or so. Uh, it's there just because I did a lot of uh, testing with fuses to determine they weren't nearly fast enough. So I thought I just would leave it in there. If it does blow later on when I go to uh, longer runs for various purposes like melting a bunch of copper or something, I can just increase that up to 40 amps easily. And I even have a larger size of blade fuse and a holder for that. So I can go up to 50, 60, 70 amps if I want it, if I needed to. But so far that's working fine. Again, to summarize this test, it's been a long time coming, but my little box is uh, working as it's supposed to. Thank you for watching.